Welcome to the second edition of uh, the Power Hour with Poopster and Prince. The the you know IRC people from somewhere. Anyways, we've got a lot of cool stuff to talk about tonight. Uh, man, I wrote out quite a bit of shit for this, so. Uh, so, yeah, welcome to another weekly installation of the Power Hour. You know, uh, we are live on Real Media, uh, reallibertymedia.com, uh, starring me, uh, your sickening, boring, and 14.25 seconds away from a total psychotic collapse, Prince. You know, I had a decent week, worked on some different projects, contemplated the meaning of life, wrote poetry about butterflies, studied the mating rituals of uh, chimpanzees. It was it was beautiful, you know? It was beautiful. I don't know. But life is disgusting, really, at its core. We won't talk about that, though. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to be a pessimist, you know? So... In the same broadcast as me, I have Poopster, an inordinate distance away, somewhere in a random corner of the country. He wants to stay anonymous. I'm assuming, uh, assuming he's like in Puerto Rico. No, that's too domestic. I, he's probably like live in Guam. Uh, but he's legendary, peer verified, oozing with irresistible male virility, and meat sweats. Poopster! What's up? How you doing, Poopster? How how was your week? My week has been great. The kids are back in school. Yeah? Um, so, as a parent, uh, you know, can't ask for a better uh, thing than the uh, start of a new school year. Certainly and, not, um, my friend. It, it, if I had a family, I'd feel the same way. But, you know, I feel the same way about my cat. So, you know, I, I I have some sort of relation, I guess, right? Yeah, uh, that's kind of like your kid. I yeah. mean, you know, most people who own, you know, dogs or cats consider, you know, them to be part of their family. So I totally understand how you feel. Yeah, yo, so I read this thing the other day. It, I'm not usually a meme type of guy, but I just saw this scrolling. And there was an interaction be- between a uh, a pet food company saying that uh, younger generations are making these pet food food companies go out of business because they're treating their animals like uh, like their actual children. And the response to that was basically the younger people are treating their animals like living beings and actually feeding them real food instead of crude protein and ground up bones and shit like that. I thought I thought it was a pretty good burn to uh <laughs> to the pet food industry. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's I would I would think so. I mean like uh Yeah, I'll send my cat I to school, like, Grimnir. <laughs> yeah. To her I doctorate. Mean, I like social media, all kinds of crap, you know, um they take their pets everywhere. They feed oh, them man. gourmet food. So that that part is, I could totally understand. Yo, I hate the Pomeranian people, man. Keep that dog at home. I don't want to see it in your arm. Come on, shit. True. You're just like yeah. I mean, you got to pay like thousand dollars for a dog. You just want to show it off, carry it around. Listen, I live. I I know Beverly Hills. There's scumbags like that everywhere. I mean, and, you know, rich scumbags. Uh, scumbag doesn't really have much to do with money. <laughs> but... Well, you mean, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So. Oh, yeah. All right. So, um, you know, we're being stormed on the streets for autographs after our premiere broadcast last week. It went so well uh, that... I, I go order coffee at uh, the bodega down the street, and the guy's like, Oh my God, it's Prince from the Power Hour! And he gives me free coffee. Nice. So th- that's like celeb benefits, man. We're getting somewhere, you know? I even get, yeah. like, nubile young cosplay chicks, and they're asking for you. 
your address, your social security number. I mean, I, I think they're girls. Uh, <laughs> the, the one guy had a Nigerian accent, uh, but I mean, he, he sounded kind of feminine. What do you? Uh, I, I don't know. I hope there's no Adam's apple involved, but whatever. One of them. Oh, might have we been have involved. a uh, we have a IRC guy, you know, Mr. Aloha, who's uh who's Mr. Trends. Oh FBA. yeah. If you're interested in the conspiracy on transvestigation, I'm not sure if you guys are into that, but I know Real Liberty Media is into, you know, fringe subjects, controversial things, and uh, there apparently is this very large uh, sector of the population that does transvestigation and are convinced that many people in power are actually transsexual. Uh, and there's some giant agenda to that. So, if you'd like to explore that, you're more than welcome to come to the Holy Roger and ask uh, Aloha. He's usually in brackets, because bracket gang, whatever, you know. Uh, but that's apparently a real thing, and he uh, he's totally serious about it. <laughs> totally serious. I mean, totally serious. Coffee, yeah, I gotta milk that coffee thing, sock buck. But free coffee is is the best coffee. I mean, you know, I won't fuck with no latte shit, but give me some dark roast and uh, uh, some sugar, some not not stevia, fuck stevia, some some of that sugar in the raw stuff, man, the brown stuff that's not bleached. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you a coffee snob, by the way? I'm not a coffee snob. I drink Don Francisco's Kona Blend. It's cheap All right. and it's awesome. Well, I don't even drink coffee, so. Oh yeah, that's actually something I wanted to. Int- you know, I've done a lot of drugs. I'm not gonna lie. I don't do them anymore. I'm pretty good. You know, uh, I popped a bunch of Xanax tonight, but that's just what I do it to. You know, because you made me fucking nervous, man. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but but uh, anyway, you know, I always kind of cut it close, don't I? <laughs> you are you are completely sober, right? You've never done oh. drugs. Nope. Clean so, as a whistle. Is that like clean upbringing? Were your parents like uh, good, or you just never never uh, had an interest? I guess I don't know. I had a decent upbringing. I just never got into that kind of scene, you know. I mean, I, I smoke. I start. I try smoking at eight. And um, didn't like it. Yeah. Um, at the same age, I you know drink a, I don't know a bowl of beer. I think they pour it in a bowl back in a long time ago, and uh, I liked it. But you know, um, I thought it was pretty cool. You but know, I never really got into it, and um, and I went into a social drinking phase um, when I was younger. Um, but I really don't drink these days. Um, Maybe because of the dad uh, responsibilities, you know. But, yeah. Also, I'm a cheapskate, so <laughs> it's kind of a, uh, what you call it, a ongoing cost, if it is, if I have yeah. to say that. Yeah. So. I mean, it's yeah. definitely not something that's good. Addiction is a, is a terrible problem in America. I mean, I was I was lucky enough to escape what I went through. Actually, I was telling Moose Girl the other day um, uh, that I started drinking when I was 12 because we didn't have babysitters. Uh, my, my parents would go to work and they'd leave us home all day. So I thought it was cool mm-hmm. to play adult. And part of that was mixing drinks with my dad's whiskey in a blender. And I, you know, I don't remember being drunk. I, I had no idea being drunk was, but shit, man, you know, looking back, that's probably, you know, why that happened to me, unfortunately. Uh, you should supervise your kids, you know, don't leave them alone, get a babysitter, right? Right. Well, I had a similar uh, upbringing, you know, uh-huh. being poor, parents were poor, so uh, they yeah, would go too. to work and I would stay home. I didn't do the drinking thing, but I watched a lot of TV. Um, yeah, yeah. That's probably how I got into cooking for myself. Um, so, you know, I'm Growing pretty good poor, cook man. now so from that Growing, experience. We have, I, I grew up poor, too, man. I mean, like, my dad had his own auto garage. My mom literally wiped uh, geriatric asses as a nurse's aide. 
Man, she worked hard. Now she, now I'm not going to say where she works because everybody's going to criticize me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm being light about our intro here because I've got some pretty uh, advanced subjects to get into tonight. Uh, with 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 uh, in regards to a few things. So, um, but Poopster, you really got to pay attention this week. Yeah, I, I I know last week you were just like browsing ThinkPad ads uh, and yeah. stuff, a- and you're probably watching the uh, the latest episode of Young and the Restless. So I know that's one of your favorite shows. Um, <laughs> uh, but you got to pay attention, buddy. I mean, if you oh, fall will, asleep, yeah. if you fall asleep, it's cool. I mean, well, so, uh, <laughs> there's no touch on power outage. <laughs> so, but you know, um, I think they fixed that my grid, uh, the last year. So good. Um, let me good. knock on wood. So there you did, go. did you finally order that smart butt plug we were talking about last week? I mean, I know you were, you had it on your Amazon wish list. Well, I was going to order it for Aloha since for, oh, you know, yeah. Into, yeah. If I were to order it, that's what I'm going to give it to, you know, uh, that early Christmas gift because Christmas is around the corner soon, you know? Hey, man, Christmas is every day for a smart butt plug that can be hacked. That's right. <laughs> it, it's one of those gifts that keeps on giving. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. All right. So let me see what time we got. I think we wasted a, enough time just bullshitting. Five dollar no words. I'll use like fucking forty five dollar words, man. Watch out. Yeah. Or like I don't know, maybe fifty cents. I, I can't afford much, so it is what it is. Anyways, yeah, it's going to be that kind of broadcast. So. We're going to dive right in. We spent 18 minutes wasting time, so I'm going to dive right into this week's Power Hour. Uh, like I said, we got a lot of pretty interesting stuff to talk about tonight, so let's jump in this godforsaken pool of shit coins and magic internet money. The young and the breastless. Oh, God, that that's probably fucking uh, Epstein's favorite show. Oh, God, man. We're going to get into a conspiracy the the- theory on that later, actually, <laughs> uh, on Epstein. I, I found some pretty interesting information. Uh, that I'll, I'll save that for last. Um, so, uh, first, I'd like uh, to offer the community and new listeners a public service announcement. Um, if you are new into cryptocurrency... And uh, and you're wondering what it's all about, and you want to know more. Uh, you've likely heard about scam after scam after scam, and that's true. There are a lot of scams. This does happen. But keep in mind, this is not exclusive to cri- crypto. Everywhere in the world is a scam. Everything is a scam. You have to be proactive. The only reason why people find it so daunting is because the Fed isn't holding your hand telling you what to invest in. You actually have to be smart and do your research. So as long as you're proactive and intelligent and you talk to reputable members of the scene, uh, compare with people, you, I mean, there's a lot of information out there, red flags that can tell you what's legitimate or not. So that's, uh, you know, that's important. It feels good to think for yourself, right, Poopser? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you know, like you said, there's scams everywhere. But you know what? There's one thing that's not a scam, and it's this show. That is fucking true. Is, we give it like fuck a $5 mm-hmm. word. I'm a sock puppet. I mean, I don't know what our five, what, what, how much words cost these days in, with inflation and all. <laughs> yeah, it depends. It depends who you ask, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it could be like five fifty by now. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> but to, again, continuing with my PSA, 
to be successful in the jungle of the digital realm, you've got to be smart, proactive, and do your research. Never jump into anything without first researching it and finding out the whole story. And that you guys know in the channel that that is important for every subject. Politics, world events, news, all these uh, uh, clear channel outlets, you know, spitting the same echo chamber. You know, we got to find out for ourselves. We got to do the research. We got to cross check. You know what I mean. So, in closing on the the, the public service announcement, in crypto, uh, crypto definitely be w beware of scams. If it sounds too good, good too good to be true. You know, it probably is. Actually, 99% of its time, if it sounds too good to be true, back away. And just don't just jump in, you know. Uh, don't fall, fall up for heartwarming stories about how Mama Jane lost her leg to diabetes and, want, and she needs crypto for, for Domino's pizza cards or something like that. Because there are a lot of scammers, shitheads, and scumbags in the world, not just in crypto. So, uh, you know, just be proactive and be smart, and you'll be good. And don't put everything in, man. Aw, the, the word cat is worth $5. Sock puppet. I love my cat. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um... For people who who are tuning in to this who may not have access to IRC, um, Freenode IRC is actually one of the best places to get accurate information about crypto and, and to speak to people uh, who develop crypto, who work, uh, who are involved in open source projects, uh, everything, you know, so you can join... Uh, channels like Dogecoin, the Holy Roger, Altcoins. There's a, a host of other ones. If 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 you have a cryptocurrency you're looking at out there, uh, most likely the dev team does uh, does all their work on here. At least that's how how it's been since 2014. A lot of them have moved to, you know, the Anon chat protocols. But uh, or you can ask me and Poops there. We won't, we won't steer you in the wrong direction. Uh, yeah, we are always online, man. You know, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, beware of Reddit completely. If you're looking for crypto information, do not count Reddit as a, as an accurate source. Sure, there's there's some stuff on there, but if you got to have a keen eye. I mean, there's a lot of good. There's some good information peppered in there, but but it's a cesspool of of bots and uh, attention seekers. So, you know, I definitely use it for for limited purposes. And as far as these other services, be very careful when getting involved in crypto on Tether and especially Discord. Uh, give you a little background. Discord is a privately owned company, and they have the right to keep the records of all of your communications, whether you like it or not. You know, there are some good people on Discord, and, you know, I do have some good conversations, and they have some good anti-spam me uh, methods, and good moderation, generally, in all the channels. Uh, and it's funny, uh, if anybody from here, here from Discord is listening, we always get in spats, like, these crazy fights about whether Discord is better. And I'll set it straight, okay? Discord, I mean, IRC is best, is better, but really, they're not even comparable. IRC is a fucking protocol. Discord is a proprietary service. That's all you need to say. <laughs> you tell them, Prince. Yeah. That's, no, yeah. That's Most that's coins are on Discord now because all the kids are Grimner, but it's not a, a good service. Uh, Briar actually uh, is something up and coming that sh you should look into. Um, it's in early development, but uh, it's actually really promising. It, it, it's got a bit of a learning curve, but it's uh, 
it's great so far from what I've seen. Uh, so definitely check out Briar. I mean, I could see a lot of uh, a lot of the ecosystem moving to Briar if they end up, uh, you know, developing more. So yeah, check them out at briarproject.org. Yeah. So yeah, I use it too. It's uh, not bad. Yeah, I just started the other day on on the recommendation of Rotten Socks and Ray Carruth, who I think is actually like a dev, but doesn't tell anything about himself. I think Ray Carruth like devs all the fucking programs on IRC, but he hides in a boat somewhere and says he doesn't. Is he? I don't know, actually. <laughs> I'm joking. I have no clue. I don't know either. Uh, even Rockin. Rotten Socks. I, I asked him, are you the main dev? He said, nope. Yo, Rod, Rotten Socks ignored me for like three weeks for no reason. And then we just started talking again. But these are yeah. funny Anon people, you know. It, it's it's cool. I, I take no per, per, personal offense. Like I said, I've, I've, I use my ignore list once on IRC. Uh, you can't offend me. It's the internet. You know? And when, yeah. when people get in fights of words... It's an endless battle, and, and it it's useless. You're just basically talking to the wind, trying to outdo each other with personal insults. I see it all the time. I, I talked about this before, and, and I hope, you know, people uh, tend to get, a, get, get a, you know, a better sense of how to interact with people. But I have spoke with some uh, known... Uh, easy to, tr- to trigger people and, uh, and uh, the other political channels, and I'm always straight with them. Uh, and luckily, they listen. I mean, because I I'm I'm not hiding anything. It's the truth, you know. So, all right, moving on. Um, this week's Power Hour is brought to you by the infamous Holy Roger coin, the only coin that tells you the truth. The only coin with psychic powers. With only the the Holy Roger coin can you win so much that you'll be sick of winning. And when you're so sick of winning and you can't think about winning, winning again, you'll probably projectile vomit. I heard that's what happens when you overdose on winning. Or maybe that's just some narcotic Dr. Phil is addicted to. I, I, I have no clue. Free base winning. That's what the corporates do. corporate people will do, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I free base winning. Free base. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. You have no shame, sir. No, you didn't follow... Okay, never mind. I messed that up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do we got? What's popped up in the agenda since last week? Ah, nothing. No news is good news. Sideways Bitcoin, we actually dropped under 10K, and there seems there's a bit of hesitation, a lot of shorts going on, a lot of uncertainty in the crypto market. But, you know, we move on. It's not the end of the world. Uh, I think uh, Bitcoin has been... Proclaimed dead, I believe, over 200 times since 2013. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, there's just too much behind it right now. So, and if you didn't tune in for last week's premiere, so welcome, 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 welcome. Pull up a chair, grab whatever drug, body pillow, stress ball, um, what do they call them? Vibr- vibrator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gerbil tube. Comfort device that you may need to cope with the harsh realities of life in today's world. But our show is wholesome and wonderful. Endorsed by Oprah Winfrey herself. And I think Yanni, if if he's still alive, I think he posthumously um, endorsed us. No, I think he's still alive, Yanni. But... Uh, so, let's see what's up. Uh, what I'm, I'm just trying to go, because I wrote a lot of shit here that that I'm just going to fill time with. So, 
I want to mention that, as always, you can interact with Poopster, me, and the rest of the Real Liberty Media crew in the Real Liberty Media channel on Freenode. There is also a web link on Real Me- uh, reallibertymedia.com. But if I were you, do yourself a favor and use a real client. Register and join. In the blog after this post, I'll, I'll leave a link for how to easily, in five steps, register, to for, register for Freenode. And then you can be part of the cool kids, just like us. And you'll instantly gain cred with, uh, I don't know, the football players? No, we don't like those guys. But uh, a mega nerd, yeah. And, you know, 11 out of 9 women find uh, mega nerds sexier than George Clooney's stubble. So, and anyways, uh, stop by, interact, ask questions, tell me I'm worthless. You could even tell Google how to register for Freenode, you know. So, anyways, moving into crypto and economics. I want to break down cryptocurrency from the absolute bottom for for people who may not know there is you obviously know it's quite a complex ecosystem right right poop sir what what yeah yeah oh poops is not awake all right i got it <laughs> i'm here i'm just giving you some flat uh shit no no, no i i no, no, no. Poopster giving shit is, is, is par for the course. I mean, I expect that. That's right. That's, uh, with, with a name like Poopster, it's got to be fecal. All right. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. So crypto, what makes a real cryptocurrency? That would be the difference between digital currency cryptocurrency, and tokens. And some of those terms are interchangeable, but we'll, we'll get into that. You know, Some people might be familiar with those terms, but when it comes down to it, it, as similar as they may be in action, there are stark fundamental differences between them. Easily? Isn't Vincent Easily a person? Uh, Vinny? I, I, I don't know. It's stream of consciousness shit. I just talk. It's a Xanax. <laughs> Anyways, so yes, there's a fundamental mental dif- difference between crypto, digital currency, and tokens. So, first, digital currencies. Digital currencies are absolutely intangible. They exist only in the form of numbers. And actually, digital currencies make up uh, roughly 90% of all money in circulation around the globe. And if you understand fiat currency, there's a strong tie-in. And uh, digital money, you know, the the way that they make it, uh, is just another extension of that fiat system. So lots of companies use digital currencies, but they have no real-world outside value outside of the ecosystem that creates them. It's uh so digital currencies are not real technical cryptocurrencies. I, I'm trying to think of an example. I know they're out there. I, I can't remember like maybe like how uh Ralph's gives you rewards. No, that that's not the same thing. I don't know. But I should have prepared for that. Vincent Easley is real, and I recognize the name, but uh, I don't remember what he does, Vinny. I'm sorry. Um, okay, next. We have cryptocurrency. So this is where it may get confusing, because uh, cryptocurrency is, in fact, another digital currency. But the main advantage being that it is completely decentralized. Not one single person or entity owns the Bitcoin network. Although, you know, through the years market dominance uh, seems like it's concentrated it a lot, much like what happens uh, in fundamental capitalism. That's a problem we probably have to work on, but shit, man, 
this is our first try. I mean, we're going to make some some mistakes. I mean, I hope it works out, you know. But anyways, cryptocurrency is a digital currency, but not to be confused with uh, proprietary uh, digital currencies. Uh, you know, a, digi a digital coin as a cri cryptocurrency is an asset native to its own blockchain. So that's the, that's it. That's that part. So uh, anything to add, Booster? Um, I think you uh, wrapped it pretty good. Good, good, good. Thank you. I, I appreciate the encouragement. Maybe we can snuggle later? Uh, I, I mean, hetero. Totally hetero, bro. I mean, like, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with two bros having a cuddle. That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Moving on. As uh, as I was saying a moment ago, cryptocurrency by nature is 100% decentralized. Uh, again, not one single person is in control of the system that supports a true cryptocurrency. Changes in the code operate completely on a, on a consensus basis, meaning that for something to change, there has to be uh, majority agreement within the participants of the system. When I mentioned uh, Bitcoin Cash, Bcash, BCH last week, that was a really good example of what happens when when networks don't reach consensus because Bitcoin Cash forked from Bitcoin because they didn't want to they didn't want to update their code because they wanted to keep the exploits that they were using and they, they were successful they made a fuckload of money and they doubled their balance basically uh, and that's what scumbags do but that's neither here nor there um, I was just giving an example uh, as to what happens uh, if consensus does not work. Um, it's a comp it's a totally uh, agreed system. So yeah. Uh, so that leads me to what a blockchain is. I mean, you hear it every everywhere these days. I mean, on the news there was like. Blockchain the planet. Blockchain uh, pizza. I don't fucking know. I mean, but it's like a buzzword. It's it's like trendy. But what a blockchain is, it's simply a decentralized ledger of every single transaction taking place that cannot be altered or manipulate, manipulated unless everyone agrees that it's necessary and or beneficial. That's what a blockchain is. It's just like a giant financial ledger. And it's, you know, completely updated and well, consistently updated and real time, et cetera, et cetera. You know, usually, uh, speaking of the, the consensus, code changes usually happen uh, or initiated uh, to patch exploits, make the system more secure. Um, but that's, uh, that's uh, just to explain the basics. So, moving on to decentralized ledger, I feel that it's important to explain this because uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, these major currencies, they are not 100% anonymous. I think I mentioned that last week. It's a term called pseudo-anonymous. Pseudo-anonymous, if I don't trip over my words. So... Uh, you know, there are a number of coins that, uh, okay, I, I, I read that wrong, okay, so, um, you know, people are sometimes pretty turned off by the fact that everything they do in these chains, every transaction they make, including their respective balance, you know, how much money you hold, is in public view. But, to clarify that a bit, a Bitcoin a address will not typically by nature have any personally identifiable information uh, if you're using legitimate services, not even IP num addresses. So there's generally no personal information attacked, uh, attached to it. And finding out who does what on a blockchain is something of a sleuth game. 
Uh, now, if you use a service like Coinbase or pretty much any other company located in the United States, you give them basically your ID, your firstborn, social security number, and everything. So if you store coins on that service, you're, you're not doing well. You know what I mean? You should use something else. Use a, use a offshore exchange. Use a, use a privacy coin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then the only caveat is getting it back to fiat. But that's a story for a different time. So, you know, these, these companies that make you verify your identity, don't be fooled into thinking that they're not going to catch you because... Coinbase is already reporting uh, earnings to to, to uh, who the fuck are those guys? Shit, Booster, help me out. Yeah, actually, yeah, they are. No, no, um, no. They, the Fed. Fuck. How could I forget the Fed? Anyways, yeah. So they report earnings to the Fed. So, um, but. Tracing transactions is actually relatively easy to do if you know what you're looking for on a public blockchain. People do it all the time. You know, it's uh, you, know, you can use mixers and things like that just to you know spread your coins out everywhere, and that works sometimes. But uh, as we were talking about privacy-centric coins last week, it's much better to use a coin like Monero, uh, Zcoin. Uh, Grin or Beam, which uh, are are very new. Any other priv coins? Hmm. I think those are the major ones. That's the most well known. Yeah. Crypto note. Yeah. Right. Well, um, I was trailing off there about privacy coins, but I want to explain why Bitcoin was designed the way it was. On these pseudo-anonymous chains, transparency was an absolute requirement to bolster cryptocurrency's legitimacy. You know, for something as important as people's finance, total transparency is the only way to gain trust in that system. To put it in a weird example, imagine you're buying a Chrysler LeBaron in 1989 white convertible from some, some shady dealer named, who calls himself Buddy and smokes fucking uh, Swisher Sweets. He's offering you this awesome deal and the car actually looks nice, but he's not, he, he won't let you look under the hood. He won't let you, he won't let you check out the engine. You know, are you going to buy that car? No. But he won't let you check it out. Now, the same thing goes with open source software as well as cryptocurrency. If you can't examine the code top to bottom, look under the engine, then it's not a good thing. So, the transparency thing, while it may not be conducive to, to total privacy, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it was the proof of, uh, proof of concept that this could work, and now it's the backbone of the system, and we have countless other privacy coins if you do need to make that choice for privacy. So, I just wanted to explain that. Uh, I thought it was important, you know, so... Um, you know, privacy is indeed important, you know, but it's... Uh, it doesn't have to be the backbone of the crypto eco ecosystem. We're just looking for a way to break away from from the current man. This the the, the current uh, what do you call them? Man, I'm, uh, I don't know elites. Shit. Vinny's here. Yeah. Oh, will the real Vincent Easley please stand up? Please stand up. Back when Mark Wahlberg was Marky Mark. This is when we used to make the party start. We used to mix in. No, okay, shut up. I gotta stop. So I'm, 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 I'm losing, uh, losing a focus. Who, who is this Vincent Eastley? Uh, that's Vinny, man. Vinny in, uh, in Real Liberty Vinny? Media. He's a homie, bro. Oh, mine. I, 
I read his line, man. I did too at first, and uh, and he corrected me. Okay. I was like grapevine. So, all right, moving on. This uh, this is something that Giratina, uh, a good friend who has uh, some strange tendencies to portray himself as a 14-year-old Chinese anime character. I mean, it's cool. I don't judge. I, uh, no, he's awesome. But yeah, he mentioned that I should talk about Ripple. Ripple is very important. So let's talk about Ripple. Uh, my mic's crackling it up. Maybe it's my computer. I don't know. You have too much shit open. Let's see. Hey, hey, there we go. Um, so, Ripple, the ticker, XRP. Uh, this is a bit of an enigma in the cryptosphere because it is, by design, 100% centralized. It's a small group of people that have complete control over Ripple's blockchain. And this is made painfully apparent by their brazen implementation of a feature they 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 call uh, freeze all a assets on the chip. I think it was just freeze all. Uh, so they can at any time just freeze your money, freeze the entire chain, do whatever the fuck they want. Uh, they've used this feature actually already. Um, I'm not going to mention why because it might have been justified, but uh, that's not how it works. That's, that's not a cryptocurrency. You know... Uh, Ripple is definitely not to be trusted, and I'll get into why. Um, you know, its its creation is also governed by uh, Ripple Labs, who work hand in hand with the banking system. We're all seeking to fucking free ourselves from. So it's they're like a sleeper cell in the crypto crypto community. Stay away, stay far, far away. So. And this is actually very similar to what Facebook is trying to do with their with their Libra coin. It's it's centralized. It doesn't really. It's it's a it's masquerading as a cryptocurrency. So, um, you know, this is not innovation in the direction of progress. It's, this is this is just co-opting. You know. Digital currencies like Ripple and Li Libra are bastardi bast bastardizations of blockchain technology. And, uh, shit, I have a lot about Ripple here. Um, Ripple Labs, I mean, it just piles up with Ripple. So, Ripple Labs offers two separate platforms. XRP is what the c consumers get on their end. The banks get something else called RippleNet. That's super fucking shady. It's typical of a centralized ent entity. Definitely not of cryptocurrency. So, last but not least, a thought, uh, uh, some facts on, on Ripple. Uh, Ripple has some major discrepancies within their claimed market cap. Uh, in quarter four of 2018, Ripple had stated that their market cap was somewhere in the vicinity of $13 billion. Uh, research by the firm Masari, they investigated the claim and found strong evidence that the market cap, as well as the circulating supply of Ripple, uh, had been overestimated by as much as 48 fucking percent. Now, let me point out that Ripple does not share the methodology or exchange data it uses to calculate it at its advertised volume. And, uh, yeah, that's not good. The other thing is that 99% of Ripple's trading volume originates overseas. And that's not a surprising thing outright, but uh, Ripple Labs is an American company, um, you know, it, it's it's just uh, seems a bit convenient for them. So 
basically the theory behind that is that most of their volume comes from wash trading, which is a form of market ma manipulation where the buyer essentially is the seller. So he just sells into himself and creates false volume. Uh, these things happen everywhere in financial markets, but um, you know when it's an initiated by the institution who owns the uh, the financial product itself, it's pretty alarming, you know. Right? Wake up! Oh yes, man, that's right. Poopster is uh, fapping. I am monitoring the IRC channels. Oh, questions. yeah, man, do that. Interact. Yeah, and last week you Interact, might have heard me talking yeah. about... Oh, what was that? Okay, what game? Hmm? What? Estoy para diente y mi mente aquí. No, I don't know. Fuck <laughs> it. Um, yeah, moving on. Last week you might have heard me mention Craig Wright. You probably don't remember because I said a lot and it was it was pretty fucking complex, if you ask me, and I'm sorry. But, you know, you can always retrace in broadcasts uh, or podcasts. So, Craig Wright. What's his middle, so, what's his middle name? What's his middle he name? He goes by a full name, yeah. What's his, what's his real name? Middle name. Craig something right, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> yes, W or something. I don't Yeah. Craig, Craig D. Bag, what right? No, anyways. In our circle of, of uh, outing spurious and otherwise illegitimate crypto cryptocurrency, we have a term for coins like Ripple and Libra. We call them Craigs. And this is straight from the eloquent words of uh, the Holy Roger. Uh, a Craig is a term used to describe something in the cryptocurrency world that is pretending to be something else. And if you remember why I mentioned Mr. Wright last week, it'll become much more apparent why we call it that. So, uh, in closing on Ripple, that's the last I really have to say. I'd just like to recite a small passage written also by the, Holy, the Holiest Roger, uh, lead dev of Holy Roger Coin. Uh, Ripple is pretending to be a cryptocurrency, but it is in fact just a private blockchain managed by one entity. Imagine it as if a SQL database weaseled its way onto exchanges. That's pretty succinct. Accurate. Right? Yes, that's correct. All we right. should have the Holy Raja on for an interview. One we of will. These, uh, I, think, I, I think we will, man. I think that's a good idea. It totally yeah. is. So the last thing I have to mention, which is, which is a touchy subject for a lot of us that have been here for a long time, is the token or smart contract ecosystem. So... Contrary, contrary to popular opinion, yes, tokens are, in fact, cryptocurrencies. But not in the way that you think they are. But they are, in fact, cryptocurrencies. Uh, obviously not related to the ones I was uh, explaining a moment ago, but uh, it's a bit complicated. So, tokens are created and executed within a specific blockchain as smart contracts. So they have set rules. Sometimes you can create, you know, a million dollars and hope that a million dollars in shit token and hope, hope that someone buys it. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with, with, with smart contracts, but um, platforms like uh, Ethereum, Ripple, uh, Counterparty, I think even Bitcoin Cash has a token layer now, or there's there's a ton of them. I I really don't pay attention, but um, you know, like I said, tokens are smart contracts meant to execute at the creator's request on a shared blockchain. Uh, you know, a token a token 
is a contract on. Uh, well, what did I say there? I'm not even reading my own words. Did I even write that in English? Anyways, <laughs> moving on. I'd I'd like to maybe say something positive about them actually because. Don't get me wrong, smart contracts are not all worthless. Not all of them, anyways. Most most of them certainly have the respective places, you know. Uh, you know, think of contractor work, um, you know, agreements for jobs, things like that. You know, th there's actually quite a few different classes um, of types, but they do have their purpose. Uh, and like I said, they're they're not worthless. Let me just pull something up here so I have it to read in a few minutes because this is important too. I just like burped. Amazing. Wow, it sucks when you have like ninety thousand browsers open. Uh, uh, uh. Where'd it go? Come on, guys. Be nice to me, computer. Oh, this is going to be really crazy getting to the next subject. You guys are going to, like, tune out. <laughs> Maybe not. But it's, it's like, heady. Very heady. Uh, I'm just trying to find this article because I, I find it very important. Anyways, maybe I won't if I can't find it. Because there are five or six different types of smart contracts that perform different uh, different things. So, you know, there are a lot of negative ones, but you uh, should never consider a token as a substitute for a coin with its own blockchain. You can use it for a contract as as a middle ground but never hold tokens in the long term and believe that that they are as good as a coin with its own blockchain. So, um, uh, you know, uh, as I was saying, a, a token is essentially just a fractional representation of the base currency's chain. And, you know, Ethereum, for example. Uh, smart contracts. So... Um, and I like to say this too, because when you hold or move a token, to put it simply, uh, you're moving the digital equipment uh, of a of a paper check. Um, you know, the difference here is that the check isn't worth anything outside of the blockchain it resides on, or whatever shitty ex exchange decides to list DRC tokens. So. Be very careful with blockchain tokens. Like I said, not all of them are bad. Some of them are, are crowdfunding for legi legitimate uh, organizations. But uh, you have to do due diligence, you know. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of scams. It's a lot easier to, to create a token than a, func a functioning blockchain. So just to recap on uh, tokens, tokens are true crypto cryptocurrencies, and I'm not trying to talk shit on the whole ecosystem. Uh, they certainly have their uses, but uh, you know, as we have right now, it's pretty much a clusterfuck, so. You know, uh, remember, remember the Ico boom, Poopster? Yep. Yeah. yeah, you know, Ethereum was overrun with just scams, everything. I think the first one was a token called Mastercoin. I, I only know it by name, but uh, that started it, man. Anyways, yeah, so bottom, bottom line, you know, I, I can like to tokens. You just got to do your work. And I have this quote here. I don't know why I do. If someone could maybe tell me where it's from, I, 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 would, uh, I would be helpful. So... Economics is about looking at the real reasons behind human decisions. And it's all about interesting questions. If drug dealers make so much, why do they live with their mo with moms? Why do ma many teachers cheat to help their students? 
How can you find cheaters in a sports betting system? What does that mean? Where, where the fuck did I get that from? Jeez. I don't know. Weird. On our I don't know. I had it written in my notes here. I must have wanted to reference it, but I might have been pretty drunk, so... Mm. Shit, fuck if I know, man. So, okay. You know, we're going to move on to a pretty... Uh, yeah, 99% or not 95% of tokens are cancer, CC, my homie. You are absolutely right. But I, I, I can't blanket them all because some... Some have their purposes, and, you know, we can't let the bad people ruin it for the good ones, because that's what always happens. You know, it's, it's always it's always the, the few shitheads that ruin it for everybody, you know? So I, I have faith, limited faith, mind you, but, you know. So, uh, the next subject I'm going get, to get into is actually pretty heady. Um, I'm going to start talking about uh, quantum physics, actually. Uh, and this relates to quantum compu- com- computing um, mainly. And I want to talk about that and, and explain uh, you know, some basics about it. I'm not an expert. You know, I'm not a fucking scientist. But, you know, I, I know things about cats. No. Anyways, some of you uh, are probably aware that uh, of quantum computing, at least that, you know, it exists in some form, even if the technology isn't efficient or there yet, you know, um, they're certainly on their way, but if you're into science on the quantum level, uh, or just one of those dorks that likes it, uh, you're probably extremely aware of how strange our universe gets on a quantum level. Super strange. It's like uh, particles and waves, they do strange, unexpected, and unpredictable things. As Aloha Ferret would actually put it, I guess they would be the equivalent of quantum transvestites. <laughs> That's a, I mean, I, I, it's not a very tactful thing, but Shit, it's kind of true. So, for a brief into in, in for in, for man, the echo is just messing me up. I gotta fix this. All right, uh, a brief in, in, intro before we get into the the talk about uh, these interesting experience experiments in modern physics. Uh, I want to talk about the double slit experiment. You guys probably know about it, right? Do you know about the double slit experiment, Poopster? No, I don't. What is it? Okay. In a nutshell, the double slit experiment demonstrates that light, uh, protons, exist in simultaneous states on a quantum level. It can display characteristics of both waves and particles. You know, and we all grew up in school learning about basic physics and were taught uh, screen it wasn't really something behind that, you know? It's just uh, they thought that they traveled in predictable directions. But no, on the quantum level, things do not work that way. It's it's like uh, it's like netherworld. It's, it's, it's weird, man. So let's just talk about what really happens during the double slit experiment. So uh, electrons... We'll just say light for the sake, for simplicity's sake, are beamed toward a screen containing two slits, like I said, double slit, and a screen yep. in the back to catch those uh, electrons as they pass through the screens. Um, you know, Thomas Young. I don't think he was too creative in naming the experiment. Experiment. I mean, it's the double slit experiment. Wow. That's very creative. But uh, you called it, I would have called it the quantum clusterfuck, you won't even believe it, experiment. I would have liked that. So, uh, when they observed the screen after the experience, the scientists were like, 
what the fuck, you know? Because the electrons did not do anything that they expected. Instead of beaming straight through the slits in a uniform manner and having t- two lines of uh, uh, electrons on the wall, they're in all over the screen, in random places. You know, there are only two points of entry, which meant, to put it simply, that uh, particles basically do, quantum particles basically do whatever the fuck they want. It's the universe rebelling. <laughs> what's, uh, what's even m- stranger about the quantum world is that uh, these particles suggest that the acts, the very acts of observing them only, looking at them, influences their actions. So even though they're rebels, they still like they're still attention hogs, I guess. So I started with that actually to lead into um, cryptocurrency, actually, and the and the the advent of quantum computers and what that means for the future of cryptography. So <clears throat> you know, f- uh, effective quantum computers are becoming more and more plausible every day, but the field is still pretty much in its infancy. Uh, you know, I, I'm drawn to talk about it this week because some new, new developments I found taking place in the field uh, were very interesting that I'm going to talk about. Uh, you know, small-scale quantum computers have been built and demonstrated, but they're super expensive, super huge, and super limited in what they can accomplish. So, uh, what do you think, Poopster? Did, do you know any do you, anything about the quantum world? I mean, is... is not very much, but uh, one thing I heard is that if quantum computers becomes a uh, you know channel availability, uh, that it could crack the, uh, the whole crypto world. You know, like that's actually something that's uh, you're you're uh, you're giving a spoiler to the later um, later talk we have here. But you're right, you're right. So uh, first, I'm going to start to talk. About bit about how uh, they work. I explained the double slit experiment because quantum computers operate on a, the same basic principle. So instead of performing uh, operations using tangible binary positions, quantum computers make calculations based on probability before the object in question is measured. So basically they predict and as you know Uh, with entanglement, there are many states they can involve. So, instead of being limited to binary states, they could potentially process exponential amounts of data compared to what we have now. So, uh, it gets pretty complicated, and, and, you know, I'm not an expert by any means, but I'm just trying to break it down so so you guys, you know, get a, a, a small grasp on it and maybe look into it more, because, uh, I think it's going to be very important in the future. So, um, Instead of bits, quantum computers operates on qubits, quantum bits. So, qubits are a two-state two system. If we were to think of it in binary terms, uh, a qubit can be both a one and a zero at the same time, simultaneously. Uh, they're quantum states basically with undefined properties and positions previous to being measured or detected. So, I mean, once you detect them... Um, so that's quantum superposition. And that's basically uh, how a, con- a quantum computer will essentially work in theory. Uh, and this is useful because uh, qubits can be combined with algorithms to take complex calculations that would, it would take a traditional computer ages to complete, even if it were even possible within 10 lifetimes. You know, uh AES-256, SHA-256, they're pretty, they're pretty powerful encryption. A regular computer wouldn't be able to crack them practically. So, Anyway, if you know a bit about quantum physics, you know that particles are no- notoriously unpredictable, as I said before. So on the quantum level, as I said, anything can happen anytime for any reason, and it does for no reason at all. This is partially why we haven't made viable quantum computers yet. Uh, holding an object in a superposition long enough for it to actually do something useful is a Herculean task. Because once a superposition is measured, it loses its special state 
and just becomes a bit. For that to work, a quantum computer would need to be able to protect its quantum states from decoherence. So imagine, um, to, to put that into perspective, imagine a qubit as a quarter or a penny spinning perpetually on a table, and suddenly you look at it, and it stops. That's deco decoherence. And that's essentially the same principle behind uh, uh, this quantum superposition. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> You've always got the best input, man. I love it. Well, it's, uh, it's quantum uh, computing, you know, so... Sure. I don't even know anything about that yet, so... That's the future, I guess, right? Well, you know, I, I don't know why these quantum particles work the way they do, honestly. It's a mystery to me. Um, fuck if I know, you know. It, it, but it, it surely is in, it, interesting, you know. But it, uh, it ties back to earlier when I spoke about how the observer influences quantum particles. Uh, it's very important, actually. So, I mean, if you think about um, the way that our eye is constructed, it's not far-fetched to believe that there is some sort of force that we don't know about. I'm not trying to sound like spiritual or metaphysical or pseudoscience that affects the matter around us. I mean, I'm not talking about matrix shit, like uh, move the penny or sh something. Or what's that, what's that guy from the 70s? That uh, oh never mind, he was a weirdo anyways. So anyways, I, I know I'm not explaining all about the quantum shit, but I just wanted to touch on a few important subjects because I, I if I touched on all of them I'd be talking all night. Uh, maybe I'm not explaining very well, but I tried, and the basic gist is there. So this leads me to why I wanted to discuss this today. Uh, a few days ago. Um, well, but earlier this week, actually, a team of Austrian Chinese scientists uh, reportedly succeeded in teleporting quantum states for the first time. So, they teleported the, the quantum state of a proton, a light particle, somewhere else. And maybe it's in my living room now, I don't know, whatever. But this is really important to quantum computing because previously we were limited to a two-level state, which was the qubit I was talking about before. This photon transportation resulted in a three-level state, which they're calling a qtrit. Previously, qubits could only be zero or one simultaneously, or anything in between for that matter. So now, with the uh, qtrit, it seems there's a third possibility, zero, one, and two, and anything between them all, which would lead to amazingly powerful quantum computers if we can keep the cohesion. And a, a qubit computer would be fast anyways. So, you know, there are a lot of art, great articles and papers online that explain this stuff. If you're interested, uh, you're, you're welcome to to look if you're interested, maybe I can provide some links. Uh, I just wanted to touch on it because we're getting closer to have have some amazing amounts of computing power that we we never really dreamt of before. So, which leads me to my final um, point about crypto and quantum computers. In our case, our good old pal cryptocurrency. So, right now. We use complex ag algorithms like SHA-256 and such, and it's not breakable with uh, conventional computers. Um, it's pretty strong, you know? I mean, it would take a, a typical computer a long time, and you can't brute force it. You'd likely be trying till the end of the time, you know? Three years, because that's when the world's probably going to end in three years, right? <laughs> no, I mean... The Earth will be here. We probably won't. But point is, it's not really conceivable to uh, brute force SHA-256 or any of the other major uh, um, cryptographic functions. So, maybe Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or 
I don't know, I'm just naming rich tech people, will somehow succeed in making a working qu- quantum computer and basically trash every form of encryption we have today. I hope not, man. There's got to be some sort of... There's got to be some sort of breaking point. Billionaires don't really need to exist. To me, the existence of a single person having billions and billions of dollars in personal wealth is a failing of the economic system. Wealth, uh, accruing wealth of that amount is uh, not necessary. But I'm trailing off again, but... um, Quantum computers, I I was just talking about millionaires and shit, so that that was nothing. In my opinion, when, when the time arises and we do have useful quantum computers, algorithms will also be updated to catch up. Uh, There is one, I can't remember what it is, but, um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be an extreme problem. You know, we'll we'll move on. So, all in all, I think it's a really interesting subject. I hope you guys did, too. It was probably just like some boring lecture at a community college that you wanted to watch, uh, I don't know, episodes of Saved by the Bell instead of listening. No, you guys don't watch Saved by the Bell. You're smarter than that. (laughs) But, um, you know, this is a golden age for science and technology. And as long as we don't wipe each other out or get hit by a giant asteroid, we have a bright future ahead of us. So, you know... Stay in harmony. I'm not trying to be a fucking flower child, you know... I'm an angry man. You know, I get angry. I don't like things. But I don't think we all need to fight. That's neither here nor there. So, last thing for the night before we wrap up. I'm continuing on my theory that Jeffrey Epstein and this entire conspiracy has a direct correlation to KFC. Which on the low, means Kentucky Fried Children. I'm going to include this in my blog, but here is an ad we found the other day. I'm going to post it in RLM, and you can be the judge of that. I mean, it's uh, kind of weird. What does it say? So, Beyond Fried Chicken. What's Beyond Fried Chicken? Child Meat. That's right, you heard it right here. It's not fucking Alex Jones. <laughs> no, seriously, that it, it's kind of weird. It was just ironic that Poopster brought that my, to my attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stuff's funny. The world's a funny place. Well, you know... I guess we're going to sign off for the night because we're on an hour and 15 now. I knew that was going to take me a long time to explain the quantum shit and the the, the crypto tokens, but I thought it was important to bring that to you guys tonight. Uh, And I hope that you learned something. Uh, And if you think this could help someone, definitely direct them to the podcast. Have them listen in. You know, um, we're always here. Well, not always, but most of us are here on IRC to answer questions. And I tell people, you know, I help companies with uh, with cryptocurrency. We're here to uh, facilitate crypto adoption. So, you, are you saying say what because of the KFC thing? Do you want me to want me to re- re-explain it? I gotta wait for the delay to get a response. Unfortunately. <laughs> Who are you respond? Who are you asking? Um, quiet. Is that how you pronounce Got it? it? I don't know. Cubans are good oh, people. Cool. Yo, quiet. man, Cub- Cubanos, man, the best sandwich in the world, bro. <laughs> Give me a Cubano. All right, all right. I'm wasting time here. I'm just rambling on. So, again. I appreciate everyone for tuning in for this haphazard broadcast with loads of information that definitely won't be absorbed. But we said it anyways for the good of 
whatever and happiness and something. And uh, so next week's going to be even more fun because we're going to have some guests on from the UK to talk about, uh, you know, the situations over there. And maybe someone from Guam. No, Poops is from Guam. That's right. You're right. Possibly. No, we know. Don't lie. (laughs) And uh, we know Aloha is anonymous, but he really lives, like, in the Midwest. (laughs) he's an expat man I believe that it's all good so last but not least I want to give my shout outs alright we were going to talk about mukbang and ASMR too but we didn't have time but shout outs Strain Straight Wayne Gain Gay Wayne they're both the same people but he he has you know he's fighting Nachi or Nochi I'm sorry you know I never said these words out loud before Coffee Guy a.k.a. Zen Guy, Z-Cat, E-Man, a.k.a. Raptor Jesus, Buzz, Nerdcore, Johnson, Hebnoid, Rotten Socks, Handyman, Amirsky. So, I wonder who else. Uh, let me check. Uh, I said them last week. So, yeah, Smasher, Giratina. Smash. Yeah, boys. Yeah, boys. Shinahai. Rome's Dobbs Coin Crew, Litecoin Crew. So, well, till next week, friends. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for putting up with my really complex rambling. It was hard for me, actually. Believe me, it's a uh, it's a difficult subject to explain, and sometimes I feel like I'm not making sense myself. So, thanks for sticking along with me. Thanks for having me. And signing out. What do you have to say, Poopster? Signing out? Signing out from Guam. On From Guam. Signing out. Nice. All signing right. Till next week, RLM peeps. Peace. Whoop, whoop.